I want to talk today a little bit about the observer design pattern, uh, but we have to get a little bit warmed up before we can get to that. So here is a temperature sensor, a very simple simulator. It will tell us that the temperature is always 67 degrees. It's part of a thermometer application, which I wrote in JavaFX. Uh, again, very simple. We set up UI, we stick in a label that says current temperature, and then we put in the uh, temperature label, which is initialized with the current reading of the sensor. So here's what it looks like. And that's it, because my sensor never actually changes. So let's make the temperature sensor itself a little bit more interesting. Um, what I'm going to do is set it up so that when I create a temperature sensor, it also starts up a new thread that's going to modify this temperature over time. Uh, so let's do it in the constructor. So the easiest way to do this in Java, in, in my experience, is to use what's called an executor service comes right out of the standard libraries. And we'll use this uh, handy uh, utility class here to get a new cached thread pool. All kinds of interesting options in here that you can read about if you'd like to, um, but it turns out this first one is going to work fine for what we're doing. Um, so I'm going to send a new job to that service like this. I will tell this service, oops, service to, um, let's see, what's the method called? Okay, I'm going to submit a runnable to it. So I'll make a new runnable using an anonymous inner class, and here. So what will happen is whatever I, I put into this run method is going to run on a separate thread. Um, so this will be, let's start with something very simple. How about an infinite loop that will uh, modify the temperature once every second? So we can say, um, let's see. Uh, We'll start by sleeping. Sleeping has to be done in a try-catch block. So we'll say thread.sleep, 1,000 milliseconds. Uh, yeah, that's all that needs to do. Uh, anytime we call sleep, we have to catch interrupted exception. Um, but in fact, there's nothing special we'll do if we get interrupted. Um, and now the real, uh, real work here is just going to be current reading. Um, let's decrement it. It's the time of year for temperatures getting colder. Um, now just to show that this is in fact running, let me just do a real quick sanity check like this. I'm going to take that out in just a minute, but uh, I want you to believe me that this is in fact running. Um, so let's run the application again. Uh, this doesn't change because it's uh, the label is created once, but we can see down here, a little hard to see maybe because of the way I laid this out, I'll close that. Notice I closed the application, but the process is still running because nothing ever told this to stop. That's going to keep running kind of forever. Um, I'll use this button there to terminate the process. Uh, so the first thing I want to do is clean up how I'm handling threads. Um, I want to set this up so that if I close the application, this service will also stop. Um, so let's see what's the easiest way to do that. There's a kind of a common pattern here that's used in multi-threaded programming. Um, I'll set up a flag like this, and now this can say as long as it's not the case that stop was requested, it will keep running. Um, but I'll stick in a extra method here, I'll put it at the bottom, called uh, shutdown. And this can do two things. It can say stop was requested, uh, but also we will terminate the service that we have running. Um, Let's see, so to do that, I'll have to promote that to a field. So we'll say private executor service. In fact, we could uh, simplify this a little bit by doing this, and that could be final. Okay. Great, so we create the service uh, in the initializer. Uh, we submit to the service this job, and when we say shutdown, we'll say service dot uh, shutdown is the name of the method. Yep, good. So now in thermometer application, uh, we want to detect when the window is closed. So we can do that in JavaFX this way. Take the primary stage and set on close request, I think is the right one. And that can be a new event handler. And again, we'll use an anonymous inner class for this. Um, and so when that request comes in, we will simply shut down the sensor. Great. So now, if I run this, 
Uh, again, the label hasn't changed at all. We see that uh, our sensor is dumping out different data to the console. If I close this, good. Everything else stops. All right, I'm going to go remove that um, print line here. That's kind of lazy, but did what we needed it to do. And uh, I'm using uh, version control here, so I'm going to say team and commit. And uh, say we uh, made the sensor change uh, readings over time good enough. Okay, uh, so now the question is, since this is up and running, how do we then make this label change when the temperature changes? Well, I can show you one way that will work, uh, but it's not a very good idea, but let's run through it real quick. We could send a reference to the view into the model, so when we make the temperature sensor, we can say, send it along the application itself. This could take an argument of type, uh, what's it called, thermometer application. And uh, let's see, so we'll hold on to that like this. In a recent video I was talking about guava, so here's a place where we could use preconditions, check not null, oops, check not null, app. Uh, that's good, and so when this changes, we could say app dot update temperature label. So this will call update temperature label on the application. Um, we'll need that method. You know, let's use some handy dandy keyboard shortcuts here to do that. All right. Uh, so what will this do? This will simply update the temperature label. Uh, temperature label dot is there a set text method sure enough so that'll be uh, whatever the current temperature is uh, that's going to come in as a float so I'll use this value of out of the string class to uh, just turn a float into a string pretty easily um, probably one more of those yep okay so I'm sending the uh, thermometer application reference to my temperature sensor um, this has a warning that this is never used. Oh, sure, it turns out uh, we actually don't need to do this because we can do this. Because the only reference to it is inside of this inner class here. If I make the parameter here final, I can read it from this inner class, uh, which means I can do Control shift o to organize my imports, and that should be fine. Okay, let's try it. Ooh, let's see what the problem is. Oh, I know what the problem is. Yeah, not on FX application thread. Right. So uh, when you are modifying a user interface, you have to do so from the user interface thread. But uh, this request here to up update the temperature label is coming from a worker thread, not my UI thread. So, of course, there's a easy way to fix that. Um, here, we use... Um, actually, I have some notes on another screen here. There's a call platform.run later. Here we go. And this will be a new runnable again. This runnable interface comes from the standard Java libraries. Um, anytime you need to wrap up something that has a run method, that's what you do. Let's see, add on implemented methods. Good. And we'll put this call in here. Okay, so now what'll happen is when I say to update the temperature label, that thread on which this update comes can't actually modify the UI, so it posts this command to the UI thread, uh, and so that makes sure that the UI is only modified on the UI thread, uh, if I got it right. <laughs> there we go. It is getting colder by the second. Okay, so that works, uh, but it's a bad idea. So we, what we've done is we've added a dependency to our model on our view. Right? Previously, our model was happy by itself, but now our model needs a view. It needs a thermometer application in order to work. Um, that is counterintuitive. Right? It doesn't seem like that should be the case, and it's bad programming practice. So let's look at a different way. I'm going to use the uh, team and revert option here. Uh, incidentally, I'm using Mercurial here for version control rather than Git, so it might look a little bit different from uh, some of the stuff you're doing if you're in CS222. Um, revert in Mercurial is like a hard reset in Git. Okay, so back to where we were. 
we should have this running and not seeing any change, even though we know our data model is changing. So the real problem we want to solve then is we have a data model that can change, and we have some other agent that wants to know when that change happens, but we don't want the model to be dependent on that agent. So this is exactly what the observer design pattern is for. So I'm going to do this in a couple of steps. First step is to make an interface. I'm going to call temperature sensor listener. And so the idea of a temperature sensor listener is that it will watch a temperature sensor for changes. So I'll have a single method in here. Actually, the public is optional there. So a single method called um, reading changed. Uh, you know, one way that a lot of people do this is something like on reading change to show that it's, it's sort of an event. Um, reading was changed. There's a lot of ways you could articulate this. Let's go with this for now. Um, and that's it. That's all we really need there. We could add more stuff, but this is okay. So I want to say that um, anybody can watch the temperature uh, sensor for changes. Uh, so I'm going to have a method here called add listener. Uh, yeah, add, uh, add listener, that's fine. And we'll take a temperature sensor listener as an argument. So now we can say that this will add that listener to a list of listeners. So that'll be another thing that we need here. Make a Java util list of temperature sensor listeners. There we go. Uh, once again, using uh, guava here in ways that I, I like to use. Okay. Um, so if we want to add a listener, we simply say listeners dot add listener. Easy enough. And you know if we want to be safe we can say preconditions check not null listener. A little defensive programming there. Okay. Now anybody can register as a temperature sensor listener. When the temperature changes we'll notify all the listeners. So we can do that like this. For every temperature sensor listener listener in the list of listeners we will call the only method that it has which is on reading change. So that notifies the listener that there was a change. So without touching any other uh, files, or I guess aside from that interface, um, we now have a way that any agent that cares about temperature sensor changes can register itself with the temperature sensor. That's pretty neat. One thing that sometimes I like to do here is this fire on fire temperature temperature change event do something like that and then we can uh, oops just so we don't have that for loop kind of clogging up space there we'll use a more semantic layer there to say that's what we're going to do change the temperature fire that event okay so how do we tie this back into the application well the application now makes the sensor and one of the first things it can do then is um, well you know what I better I shouldn't do it first because I'll build the UI first. Once we have the UI put together, we can say sensor add listener. Um, why not use an anonymous inner class here? There we go. So we're making a little one off object here whose only job it is to watch that change. And when that changes, we will call update temperature label. Uh, ooh, that method, <laughs> we had that method before we did the, uh, the reset. Um, we'll stick it back in here. Now it can be a private method. Uh, but the guts of it will be the same. Let's see, that was platform dot run later new runnable. Oops. Here we go. And what will this do? This will say uh, temperature label dot set text to be string value. Oops, string value of um, sensor get current reading. Alrighty, let's try it. Nice. So notice my temperature sensor knows nothing about the UI. It has no idea that there's a UI on top of it. What it does know is that there are things that are watching it. Uh, it's called the observer design pattern, although in Java it's uh, idiolectic to call them listeners. So we register a listener with the sensor. Every time the sensor changes, it sends an event, that event makes the UI update itself. 
and so we have a nice inversion of control accomplished through the observer design pattern. This pattern shows up all over the place in object-oriented code because it's a very standard way of uh, again, it's called inversion of control. We uh, set it up so that our, our dependencies are, are more manageable. Um, and in fact, if you look carefully at this application that I have, you'll see more instances of the observer design pattern. Here, set on close request is actually an instance of that pattern as well. So the uh, primary stage can have close requests and any agent can listen for them and so we hide that agent's behavior behind a, an event handler interface, and uh, there it is. Similarly, uh, buttons. If we have buttons, you can stick, a, uh, stick an action listener on a button. Very common pattern. Um, so hopefully that helps you understand a couple of things. Observer design pattern primarily. Uh, we also saw a couple of other neat tricks like how to change what the UI looks like from a worker thread, and of course, how to make a worker thread in Java.